This is Professor Mike Ventola from Sand Hills Community College bringing you Grass of the Week. Welcome to Grass of the Week number 14. This is probably one of the most interesting grasses um, and a little bit controversial. There's a lot going on with this uh, seashore pasbalum, which is pasbalum. Vagina, vaginatum, vaginatum, pretty hard with the Latin there, but uh, seashore pespolum, you're going to hear a lot about it in the future, and we'll hopefully give you a little bit of an understanding of the future of turf grass management in the United States. Probably United States, Brazil, Africa, and some other places. This grass is a native of uh, Argentina. Brazil or uh, in Africa, so it's kind of all along the coast there in brackish water. Um, it's a very salt tolerant grass, and that's why it's gotten the eye of a lot of turf grass breeders. It has decent color, um, but the salt tolerance is going to be very important as we get have to use more effluent water and as we move golf courses out to areas where they get sea spray or they get inundated with seawater. Um, it's we're working on they're working on quite a bit having seeded cultivars but right now it's pretty much a vegetatively propagated turf grass you can see when we look closer it's got a soft texture to it and a lighter blue green color you can look at that seed head the seed head on this grass is not very prevalent under normal turf grass conditions but under stress conditions, it will produce a seed head. So that's something you watch, but we haven't really seen it on the golf course too much. So this grass is so new, it's not even in your NC State book. But we will go through the characteristics of the grass so you can ID it, and then hopefully we'll get some in so you can look at it in lab. It's predominantly rolled but it could be considered rolled or folded, so you're going to have to look at that a little bit closer. Closer. The ligule, one book said 0.5, one book said 0.8 to 1. Um, it's scale-like with a membranous blunt tip, but it is there. Very small oracle, one book says it's there, one book says it's absent. Here's what I think you're going to look at, the growth habit. Extensive creeping rhizomes and stolons. So this grass goes sideways faster than any grass I know. It doesn't go uniformly. I'm going to show you some pictures of that, but it does move very, very fast in the growing season. Two, sometimes three spikes. Um, they're paired. Um, and they're rakeem, so spike-like paired rakeems, and I'll show you a picture of that in the next slide. Uh, broad collar, don't worry about that too much, and then a blade, two to four millimeter smooth pointed tip with that blue-green color. And it's kind of a soft grass, unlike zoysia, which is a firmer, harder textured grass. And here we go. So here's some sod that we put over at Forest Creek across from the college. That's a pretty much too far north for this grass, but we wanted to look at it, and you see that the sod had to be on the truck for a while, and the seed heads just really came out when uh, the sod was, was cut. The sod was cut in South Carolina on a heavier soil, and it took a while to get here, and this grass was really seed headed out when we got it. So it didn't look bad, and in fact, it was probably the best grass in the test quite often. Um, it's either the best grass or the worst grass. There's not a lot of in-between for this turf grass. Here is South Florida. This is the Bears Club. This is Jack Nicklaus's basically per personal golf course. They have a nine-hole par three golf course that's entirely seashore pasbalum. So these greens are seashore pasbalum. This approach is seashore pasbalum. And this rough area is seashore pasbalum. And I think this is the way you need to do it. If you're going to commit to pest pollen, you need to totally commit to it. 
Um, I like it on the approaches in fairways a lot. It's a good rough grass. It doesn't have to be very high to provide a very penal situation, but the putting greens, in my opinion, just are not of the quality of bent grass greens, and I don't even think they're of the quality of Bermuda grass greens yet. They seemed a little bit bumpy, and you can see they did show ball marks, and they did have some disease. So again, this was a new grass. It stripes up nice. You can see very nice stripes um, on these putting greens. It grows pretty fast. Um, there are some thatch problems. That's not a problem at the Bear Club where they have 30 or so uh, maintenance employees and a decent budget, but at a lower budget place, thatch might be one of your battles. So looks pretty good, but I don't think it's quite there yet. Um, so the strengths of this grass include um, probably the biggest strength, it withstands brackish water. Seawater up to 35,000 parts per million. That's pretty high. Be c careful, though, it will not establish under those high salt conditions. It will survive, but you need to have, if you're planning on wa irrigating with salt water, you need to have some fresh water to get it grown in, or it will take a very, very long time to grow in and will not grow in. It has better low light tolerance than Bermuda, although not the best low light tolerance, not quite up to zoysia, so between Bermuda and zoysia grass on low light tolerance. It requires 30 to 50 percent less nitrogen than Bermuda grass. That we like. Um, that's a big selling factor uh, is we need to have cheaper maintenance as we move forward and in the golf industry. That's that's a plus, a big plus in my mind for this C sharp S ball. It can withstand low oxygen, so waterlogged areas, areas that will get inundated with seawater in a hurricane or areas that will in a river valley that will get uh, periodically flooded for a short period of time this is probably one of your better grasses that you can use in that situation it has a shiny uh, glassy dark green and it stripes up magnificently so of the warm season grasses this is the perennial ryegrass of the warm season grasses for the way that it stripes and we can see um, see that that leaf blade and we can see here's a golf ball right here so for rough you know two and a half inches C sharp S ballum is not holding the ball up so that's a very difficult shot um, and pretty nice looking looking rough um, again you can see here's some uh, actually that there's weeds but here there's some stolons growing sideways there's rhizomes and it's an aggressive growing grass so be very difficult to maintain this if you had say Bermuda out here in C sharp pass bottom here, they would they would cross and not look good. Even with the putting green, I think that the interface between any grass and C sharp pass bottom is going to be incredibly difficult to maintain. Some of the limitations of C sharp pass bottom: um, awful winter color. This grass turns the ugliest shade of uh, gray brown uh, schmuck at the first sign of cold weather so it's the, the the if you get on this grass when it's dormant it is just terrible one of the pluses of that is if you're going to overseed it it takes overseeding very well because that that schmucky leaf dead kind of uh rotting leaf is a good seed bed it's it's mushy and the seed germinates i've never seen seed germinate um as effectively as on c sharp s bottom but it this grass gets really ugly in the dormant time. It doesn't have very good shade tolerance. It requires six to eight hours of direct sunlight, so quite close to the light requirements of Bermuda grass. It does produce some thatch. We're coming up with methods, but it's not tried and true how often you're going to need air and how often you're going to need a verticut if you can at all, or, or the if the grading is going to be a part of your maintenance on this grass. But there is a thatch issue, particularly you need to keep your nitrogen levels down, um, which is a good thing. If you're going to water with uh, unpure water, un unclean water, it's going to be difficult on your irrigation system. When you have salt in that system, it can clog the heads up, the heads won't turn. So uh, Burt McCarthy says you need to check your irrigation almost daily, every head. So that is a little bit more expense, and you need to have a budget have budgeted for irrigation repair. 
few pesticides are labeled for C sharp pest pollen. As it gets moving forward, I'm sure they will, but there are some problems still that we really don't have a labeled control for bill bugs, army worm, web worm, uh, leaf spot, dollar spot, and some patch diseases. So, and you did see some dollar spot on at the Bears Club on those greens on the par three course. And then I think one of the biggest is if you commit to this grass and you're going to plant it on your entire golf course, you're going to make Bermuda grass your weed. So if you have Bermuda grass in your fairways and you round up, you're going to have stolen there. It's going to keep coming in. You can control it. You can control it by the salt water. will do quite a bit of controlling it. But if you don't have salt water, you're going to have a mismatch of Bermuda and seashore press phallum, and that's an interesting little battle that we haven't really figured out who's going to win. So here we go. So here's some pest pollen. This is a little bit dormant. And we can see this is bent. So if we've got a bent grass green, bent here, and this is seashore pest pollen, you can see all of this area, the pest pollen has come all the way out in just two, one or two seasons. It's really encroached almost three feet into the bent. So in no way would I ever recommend having an interface that was bent seashore pest pollen. If you're going to have to go with pest pollen, you've got to do something to maintain this edge because the bent is not going this way. The pest pollen is coming in, and it will take the very low mowing height of the bent grass. So mowing is not going to help you keep the pest pollen out. And when the conditions are right, when that C4 metabolism kicks in, this grass goes lateral. So that is, I think, one of the biggest issues. And at this point, I think you need to commit. If you're going to use pest pollen, it needs to be a pest pollen golf course. And there's the putting surface. You can see, not, not bad looking. Um, it has a nice amount of turf. It probably is going to be sufficient for a golfer that's not, um, not uh, really cares about their score. But it is a little bit bumpy. And you can see one of the other things I don't like is that the, when you cut a cup, it's going to be difficult to get it real smooth. So you might have to get in there with scissors or something. So we're still learning about this grass. It is an interesting future. And that's the end of Grass of the Week number 14. The Grass of the Week music is the Sand Hills Community College Jazz Band directed by Tim Haley.